In this video, we're going to provide a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use Kumo directly in your Snowpark container services. For context, Kumo is a SaaS platform that makes it easy to run state-of-the-art machine learning using only raw data stored in your Snowflake warehouse. Whether you're a machine learning engineer looking to amplify your existing use cases or improve your models, or an app developer looking to add machine learning capabilities, or you're a business owner or analyst that wants to unlock new areas of growth, Kumo makes it easy to generate many accurate productions and makes it easy and accessible. There's no feature engineering, pipeline building, or production tooling required. Kumo is going to automate the end-to-end -end ML lifecycle and it's going to run securely on top of your Snowflake warehouse in the Snowpark container services. Now, we're going to walk through an end-to-end -end process for deploying a single machine learning model across your data. And in this particular example, we're going to use a public data set showing anonymized customer data for H&M, which includes metadata on their customers, the products they sell, as well as transactions for a fixed historical point of time. Now, this was an online retailer example, but you can also bring any enterprise data in your Snowflake warehouse, and Kumo is going to adapt to that as well. Now, let's get started. First, authenticate in your Snowflake account, and this should take you straight to the Kumo homepage. Now, the first step is to configure a connector. First, give your connector a name, select the data source, now fill out your Snowflake information. This should connect to your Snowflake warehouse. When you have your information, hit done. Now, you're ready to connect tables. First, we'll select the first table. You can set the table type. You can choose from a fact table or a dimension table. In this case, we're going to set it as a dimension table. Below, you can see the rows of the table. Next, you can select the columns that you want to appear in the table. So here, we'll keep all of them selected. Now, we need to select a primary key. So since we're looking at the articles for the products, we'll select article ID as the primary key. So we'll hit submit. we can see the table with some basic column statistics. Here, we can collect another table. We'll connect the customer's table. We'll set the table type as dimension again. We'll keep all the columns selected. And we'll select a primary key. Finally, we'll connect the transactions table. This one we'll set in the fact table. Keep all of the columns selected. We won't set a primary key for this one. We'll select a time variable. So now we have our tables connected. We can create our graph. We'll select the tables that we want to be in our graph. We'll give our graph a name. We'll call it customer graph. And now we can link our tables in the graph. Here, we'll connect our tables based on primary and foreign key relationships. We want should automatically detect some of these relationships. Here, you can add your own. And once they look good, you can hit confirm group and once your graph linkage is done, you can complete the graph creation. Now that our graph is created, we can inspect the edge quality to make sure that the graph has a good link health. So here you can see the matches and the link type. Assuming this looks good, we can start writing predictive queries. So this is where we're going to deploy the machine learning model. Here, we want to set the query name. So we're going to do a churn prediction. So we'll call this churn predict. We'll select our graph. And we'll write our query. Now, what this query is saying is for all of the customers in the data set where we've seen transactions happen over the last 60 days for them, predict the customers where there will be zero transactions for the next 60 days. The first who's going to churn in the next two months. Now, we hit train, 
in the query will run. So now the machine learning model is going to take about an hour or two to run. Once a query finishes, you can review evaluation metrics to see how it performed. Here, you'll see the basic top line evaluation metrics like AUPRC, AURSC. You'll see the different curves like RSC and precision recall. You'll see threshold metrics and you'll see column contribution to see what the key drivers of churn are. When you're satisfied, you can hit get batch predictions and run this query on your entire data set. So you can select the query that you want to run. If it's binary classification, as, uh, as it is in this case, you'll set a threshold and then you'll set an output destination. So you can set the uh, predictions to be stored somewhere on your Snowflake instance. Uh, if you already have an existing model that you want to leverage, you can actually take the embeddings that the model is going to generate and store those somewhere as well. Uh, so you can actually use both the end predictions and the embeddings. So there you have it. Uh, after that, you just hit run batch prediction and you're off to the races. So here you've seen how you can go from raw data in your Snowflake container services to end predictions in just a few minutes. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, as always, you can reach out to us on our site.